Hello everyone, welcome to Singapore Geospatial Week Plus 2020, an event organized by JOWORK, Singapore Land Authority's Geospatial Industry Centre. So we are pleased to bring to you two weeks full of geospatial webinars, spanning various uh, industry tracks and international speakers. So today we are excited to introduce Nigma from Supermap Software Indonesia to share more about brighter future of infrastructure and plot empowerment. So if you have any questions during the webinar, please leave them in the Q&A box and we will answer them at the end um, of the webinar. So thank you and without further ado, I'll pass the presentation to Nigma. So Nigma, please. Okay, hello. Hello. Can you hear me clearly? Uh, yep, we can hear you. Okay. Okay, so I can start it out, right? Yeah, you can start. Okay. Um, hello, everyone. Good afternoon. And I'm sorry if for today I'm coming quite late because we have a little bit technical issue for my presentation and because of this technical issue maybe for this presentation for today's presentation it will not uh, quite well and later you can also contact me if you want to know more and I will share my presentation to all of you so we can have further discussion so today I will have a presentation about the broader future of the infrastructure development and First of all, I will introduce myself. My name is Nigma. I am from Supermap Sophia company. And now I have a responsibility as a regional manager for Supermap Sophia in Indonesia. Then for today's opportunity, I will share with you about what we supported and what we provided for the infrastructure industry, especially in the building and so on. So we can, you can, have a look at my outline clearly. This is about my outline presentation today. And in the end of the presentation, we will I will share a view of our successful case in Asia and also Indonesia. So for short introduction, you already have, you can take a look in my slide presentation. This is already clear that yes, we already we already joined this industry since 23 years ago. And before we only have less than 10 people in our company, but every day we have to work to be, to go to our goal. Uh, every day we develop our software. And until now we have more than 4,000 employees. And also we have more than 38 branches in around the world, including in Indonesia. We have 14 Indonesia now as a principal. Then uh, this is our product short architecture, right? I want to tell you it, this is just the glimpse, so I will not explain it by one by one. Don't be worried. I will have a short explanation that we have the three base product. The first is it's about the cloud base, and then the second is about the edge base, and then about the client base. For this part of product, uh, we have different kind of Based product also is about mobile GIS, HGS server, web GIS, PC GIS, and cloud GIS server. All of this product is a full range that we have that we can connect it one and each other. And then for the technology, the supermap also always built the technology from the zero. We never bought it from the third party software of our company. We put it from the cross platform, then from the cloud native, then the 3D GIS, then the edge computing, then the big data and artificial intelligence. And here we go. Now we have new technology that we already started this year. It's about the blockchain and GIS. And actually we already have the agenda for this conference of blockchain of since from the last week. 
you can try to search about the information of our conference about blockchain in www.supermap.com. So uh, after our after my short introduction about my company and my software, we now let's get moving to the real topic of this presentation. I will not talking too much about infrastructure because I know that almost all of you already have the general idea about the infrastructure itself. It's like physical infrastructure, non-physical hard infrastructure, and soft infrastructure. But um, I will talk a little bit about the fa the problem may fa may we facing always in this industry. The first is always about the large scale of project. And then it's about the financing and funding and about the money. And then it's about the high demand in the field. But if we make it instance, it's always about the financing and the funding. The people tell us that they don't want to deliver their money or they don't want to use their money into the project or into the something that didn't come and didn't really yet. It's, it's still in, a, in their imagination. They don't know the future plan. They don't know the management. They don't know the monitoring and they don't know the result and the benefit. So they don't want to use their money. And if you take a look from the technology perspective, we can know that technology has the most impactful, stronger things in this infrastructure because using technology, it allows you to share, to discuss, to, sh to show with your clients or your owner or your government that all of these things is real. All of these things will get you into the benefit that I have a plan, I have a future plan, I have a future decision, and I have the future management to decide into the real world. From all this, um, from the last slide, I have to conclude, and this is from my experience in Indonesia, that somehow usually infrastructure there will be common issue and the first common issue is about spatial and non-spatial integration data center and the second is about the less analysis based on the spatial and the third is about the production and management monitoring and maintenance and then it's about the asset management system itself and the last but not least is about the emergency management system if you know what, actually the chat technology has supported that about the 3D and 3D data integration, it's very rich and we can have we can have all of the data combining and integrating each other. But if you see this slide, do you think it's only about the visualization about the 3D and 2D data? Of course no, because we can have more further technology for this visualization. Actually, visualization is only the part the important part, the following the integration of data itself. We can have the integration from the location, from the real model, and from the connectivity of the network for the infrastructure, then for the analysis, for the flow, for the emergency, all of those things can be built and can be combined and can be visualized effectively, effectively and efficiently in GIS. Then, the common, the next common issue is about integrating spatial and spatial data that we commonly, that we always call is about infographic and numeric data. But I don't want to talk this too much because for now this issue is very common and it's very popular. Everyone knows how to connecting it using the dashboard. Then now I will, we will focusing to. Uh, discuss about the infrastructure data that usually using BIM with the GIS itself. We know that usually we separate between the bridge, between the park, between the river, the road, into the different kind of data. And for this flow of the BIM, usually in the uh, usually in the infrastructure system, there will be uncertainty fracture that will affect and influence of all of the structure, such as the weather, the air, the climate, and so on. And these things is show you that the PIM actually is connecting to the environment surrounding. And now we will know that the cross-border of integration of PIM and GS. PIM is always about construction, maintenance, planning, and design. But how about the GIS? Actually, GIS is helping you 
to up to do operation, maintenance, resources, and analysis. From this slide, we should, uh, we can know that the PIM is usually about the detail of the object. And now, if we combine it into the GIS, we can bring the PIM from the micro to macro and from the indoor to outdoor. And all of the things can integrate into the surrounding and environment. Why we need to do to, to integrate into the surrounding environment because now the data and the infrastructure is developing is developing into the more real world into the big scale of project. It's not only about the indoor. It's not only about the detail of object, but how how your building, how your infrastructure, how your road, how your bridge, how everything is impact to surrounding, how it's impact to the residents, how it's impact to the human traffic, how it's impact to the transportation. So all of these things is integrating each other. And in Indonesia itself, for the urban planning or other things, we always facing this problem. So now we have a question about how the BM data processing flow in the GIS platform. Actually, we can divide it into the five steps. The first is about the checking and then the editing, then the optimizing, then the reconfiguring, and then we can publishing as a service to share to everyone. And if we're talking about the checking, usually the coordinate system is the most problem need to solve using GIS. And then if we do, the editing, we can merge all of your model data into multi-source of data. What, what kind of multi-source of data? I will tell you in the next slide. And then for optimization, SuperMap has many things, has many ways to do optimization of your BIM objects, such as the levels of details. Uh, don't be worried because we still to keep, we still have to keep your level of details of your model and of your object data. And then about the simplification, about deleting vertex, and the most important thing is about the projection. And then we can configure into the new 3D scene, and then we can publish your model, publish your plan, publish your management into the web-based platform. And how to import it beyond data into JS platform? If by asking you all of you, all of you here, what kind of BIM software you always use. And maybe this is very subjective because everyone will have another necessity, we have another important things to do, and maybe they will use Graphit, they will use Pinly, they will use the South system, they will use Autodesk and other things. But this is not a problem for the GS software because all of this software, uh, we already have a plugin for the software and we can export it into the GIS as a 3D solid model without reducing your equation, without reducing your object, without reducing your level of details. This is one part of the example. If we want to export from Revit into SuperMap and we will export it into our format and this format is allows you to do more analysis in GIS, to do more uh, flexibility into in the next platform, like maybe the web GIS or the portal and others. And this is to emphasize that we can merge the infrastructure data usually using BM with multi-source data, such as the vector, the terrain, or the dam, the DSM, the TTM, the oblique, the video, the street view, or the point cloud pipeline, everything. Everything's. And we cannot put all of this data usually into BM software, but we can put your infrastructure data into our software. And this is the level of the optimization, uh, such as we can we can choose uh, which are our necessary, which are our needs. If we need the level of details very, very high, so we can try to keep all of your details. And maybe this will be have some effect, like your file size data, like your data will getting bigger. But this is not a problem also for our platform because our platform is already based on the big data special. So it's not a problem. Then uh, I will talk quite 
a view about the application direction of PM and GIS. Before I talk about the solution and about the successful case, this is what we supported and this is what we tried to do the direction of the future of the infrastructure and GIS itself. It's about special calculations, special relationship, spatial, spatial analysis, projection, 3D printing, and others. That we know that GIS now in empowering environment and BM data is topologically close to the details of your object. This is about the 3D spatial calculation and this video is shared with you about the how about how we can do the operation from the 3D designer in our software into your real world. So, in this part of video, we want to try to make a tunnel that are very, very uh, efficient and very effective through the mountain because we already have the model, but we don't know how to do, uh, how to put it into the real world. So we can do in this map and we can construct the tunnel through the boolean operation based on the terrain entity and the tunnel model entity. So now we can have a plan or we can know the tunnel, it's fit perfectly into the real model, into the real coordinate location, and we can have uh, more spatial analysis into this tunnel plan. Then about 3D spatial relation, we can do a query object according to the query condition, which includes the content within, disjoint, intersect, and so on. And again, maybe this is also regarding to the urban planning because in here we are developing countries, so we have a lot of the urban planning plan, and this is very useful. Another query we can do the query, including like the backline detection, so we can detect the you know, the backline from the building that will affect into the surrounding, like what I mentioned before. We can know the impact for the, so the surrounding, the residents, maybe if there is a river, there will be impact for the river and maybe there will be a road, so there will be an impact for the human traffic and also the transportation traffic and also others calculation. And for the 3D special analysis, it's already itself in our platform. Uh, you can try to use the visibility, the shadow, the skyline, the openness and, and others. And the issue about this one is yes, also from the urban planning because right now the urban planning usually only concern about about the how building how existing building is uh, wrong and how existing building is right. Like maybe their heat is not is not matched with the regulation and others. But we never know the impact for this building if we try to make the building. Uh, with adding more head or or cutting the head or maybe we can we try to make some a canopy on this building and others it will be impacts your surrounding and about the projection we can directly project from the 2d and uh, 2d into the 3d and usually from the 2d area we didn't excavate the model yet but you can directly excavate it into our platform and um, this is another example for the empowering urban playing that we can try to put your model into the real world. We can delete or erase the existing building there and we can try to put the new model or the new building you want to build in the future. So you can know the exact location, you can know the exact management unit to know for the surrounding, even for the asset management of your building. And this is another empowering GIS for the infrastructure. We can use the component query for each object, each detail you have in your infrastructure object. Like we can already know without, uh, without waiting, without wasting your time, we, or we can know which window or maybe how many windows in your eighth floor, how many how many user in the eighth floor or maybe uh, about how many door you have in your building and others and also you already know you can know the progress of your construction 
and you, you can monitor of your work into the simulated construction progress. If you want it, you, if you want it into the real time, actually you can also put the IoT or the sensor, every, any sensor you need and any sensor uh, capable you buy to provide into your project. And this is additional technology from us. Actually, we already have the augmented reality capabilities for infrastructure planning. Uh, the first video you see is this is like you can put your you can put your model into the real data and you can see you can see the true you can see the true of your building if you if you build your building there how many assets I can put in there and how how the how the design of the inside of the interior and anything else. And the second video is about the utility. You can try to put your utility model into the real world even you didn't build it yet. So it comes to real. It's not only a plan or imagination, but it comes to real. So if there is an error or there is something problem, you already know the, uh, at that time directly. To conclude all of my presentation, that maybe it's very quickly, very quick presentation. Uh, actually, the relationship and the empowering between BIM and GS, it's always about the planning and then about the management and then about this decision. Then the last part of my presentation, I will share a few about the demo and the success case we already bring up into our clients and our partners. The first about Hydro Power Station, and then the second is about the Shanghai Center Building Management Platform. And the third is about the Hong Kong Smart Building and then about the WebGIS for construction in Indonesia. About the hydropower, actually this is very simple. This is about the BM data integration and the integration between the hydropower BM data into the terrain data matching. And it's about the monitoring and management for their equipment. So we we do the monitoring into the each detail, each object of their hydro power station. Then about the Shanghai Center building, this is actually the highest building of uh, in China. And Supermap load more than 250 gigabyte of data size. They want us to make all of uh, to make this platform into automatically monitoring and managing their whole building. Can you imagine that uh, this very tall building, they have many departments and it will be more complex if you do it in manually or in the hard copy on, or, or not automatically, it will, it will be very complex. And we do the asset management for this building. Uh, we, we put all of their utility, all of their infrastructure inside, all of their object, even all their piping, we know very details of this building and we input it in this platform. We can do query, we can know which object didn't maintenance well, we can know which object need to maintenance and we can know which object uh, need to replace and something like that. And we also put the real time emergency management system and simulation in this platform. This the compliance requirement and this is uh, the BIM and GIS. And then next is about the smart building facility management. So in this platform, it's also about the asset management, but this is more details because uh, they want us to go to the indoor and they want us to including all of the object, even it's only a lamp. It's only a lamp, it's only a desk, or it's only a chair. They want us to put all of those things into the asset management based on spatial. And then uh, in this platform, you can show all of the information of each object. And this is updating. This is updating manually and real time. If you can see in this video, we also put all of the utility like the Shanghai Center, so we can know the the flow or the piping or the electricity or the water conservancy of this building. So if they have uh, such like such as like a risk management about their utility or they want to know this is 
the example for the lamp, they want to know the lamp is needs to be replaced, needs to be changed, or there will be elect electricity problem from the lamp. They will know it directly through this platform. And then I will play the second video. The second video is about uploading your model data into your platform. So this is a uh, this platform, the second video is showing you that we can have our model into our plan in the city. So we can know, we can measuring, we can try to erasing, we can try to put another, and we can try to do trial and error for this whole urban planning. And next, let's get the power railing. Uh, it's about the WebGS for construction demo in Indonesia. And this is required based on our Indonesian partners. Uh, on this platform, we concern about the two parts. The first is about the individual and separative data. So it's about data connectivity. And then the second is about the data collaboration. So they can um, achieve about the data size challenges, challenge and about the analysis based for special challenge. In this platform, we have four main features. The first is about the real model coordinate. The second is about the data management and storage. The third is about connecting between department and four, it's about reporting. This is the view of the demo for the platform. Actually, this is uh, for the looks and for the visual, it's very flexible because we can change uh, anything. We can change the looks from the UI and UX based on the client necessary. In this feature, you can see all of your project in Indonesia only through this map. And if you do the zoom in, you can know more the project, more details if you do the zoom out. So uh, you can only know the amount of your project in this area. And then actually this, is, this platform is very simple, but this is very helpful for the construction in Indonesia because you already put all of your 2D data, all of your 3D data, and all of the information in this platform. Uh, from this, uh, you can see that all of your the project is concluding and integrating in this platform. Then you can see the information, also the picture, all of this project into this platform. You can turn on and turn off your layer. You can put it on erase it based on the real-time coordination. And in the advance, we will use it to connecting into the budgeting department. And the last but not least is about reporting. I already gave you the picture before, but this is about the, the 3D model data. Uh, they always said that we they are facing the challenges about the combining the big data from the terrain and the model because the size is very, very crazy. But uh, using this platform, using our platform, using our solution, we can we can try to avoid this challenge into into nothing, something like that. And in the end of the picture, this is like an additional that you can take a look on the real-time panoramic data of their progress of on or, or of their project. And the last part, no, this is, this is about the video. Uh, this is about the bridge highway management system in China. In this part, we have a lot of, we have, uh, we have a lot of function, uh, we can do the query based on the spatial calculation. And then we also can find the exact location just using, uh, try to use to search using the code. And then we can using the measuring, we can uh, measure all of this, all of this terrain data, all of this line, all of this polyline, and we can do the editing through the model directly into this platform. And then in the end of this, uh, on this platform, we also can do the reporting and also do the management of their bridge object details. So this is the view for the terrain view. We can, we can try to simulate uh, if, we, if we use this road, if we use this road, if this road is already built in the future. Okay, so uh, I want to say thank you very much for all of you that joined me today. And once again, I'm sorry for the technical issue before. So we are coming late because we didn't expect 
this is happen but if you want to know more uh, about the spare or you want to discuss more about the solution you can try to contact us this is our address in jakarta and this is my phone this is connected to my whatsapp and this is my email you can contact me anytime and then you can see our growing up or our project and what we do in indonesia and in other but this is especially for indonesia you can try to search uh, the link in the twitter and instagram and following us at this social media we will share a lot of activity and a lot of project that growing in indonesia for right now okay thank you very much mm. Thank you, Nigma. Uh, I think yes. from the Q&A side, um, one of them did ask you to provide the contact email address. So maybe you can also um, type in your answer again. Okay. Uh, so for, if you want to do, if you want us to do the demo, we will, uh, we will provide it for you based on your requirement or all of the demo you can you can contact us and this is you can contact me in my phone or in my email if your email doesn't send to my supermap email so you can try to send in my gmail email mm, thank you so much for yes today. thank you thank you very much